Good morning, Rich and Kathy here from Creating a Simple Life. Today we're going to talk about a very important decision we have to make. Whether to hook up with National Grid as far as electricity and our power needs or go off-grid, completely off-grid, with a solar power system. So thinking about going solar or electric on grid has been something we've kind of been thinking about for a really long time. A really long time. Back in 2013, our electric bill got really out of control, so we started to be very conscious of our usage and show them what we bought. <laughs> this is a watt meter. The way it works is it stays plugged in for a certain period of time, averages out what your kilowatt hours are for that particular appliance that you plug in. So it's pretty neat. and. Uh, it's interesting to know what you use. So what did we determine that we used over the year's time? Well, in 2013, the reason we wanted to do it, our total usage for the year was 13,634 kilowatt, kilowatt hours. hours. And I think that's considered pretty average for most families in America. But for us, it was a really big bill and we really wanted to get that lower. So over the years, we made a lot of changes because we used that meter. As of 2019, because that just ended, we used 8,918. We made a significant dent in our usage. So getting us down to last year in 2019, under 9,000 kilowatt hours for the year, for three full-time adults. I think our chances of being able to go off-grid solar are pretty high. We've also, in the meantime, the last two years that we've been working on the homestead, we made an application to National Grid and this electric and the whole process has been taking about two years so far and we finally just got an estimate from them in the mail because we initially thought that we wanted to go with electric because it would just save us a lot of headaches in the future. One of the big factors, right, is the cost of what the electric will cost us to install versus what solar will cost us to install. I know a lot of people say that solar is better because you don't have a bill. But we also recognize the fact that even with solar, in how many years? you got to figure 10, 15 years, you're going to be uh, either replacing batteries or, you know, the degradation of the solar panels themselves. Uh, they lose, what, 1% each year. So over time, 10, 25 years for the warranty these things, these things have, you know, you're going to be ending up spending money in the long run anyway. To now, replace them, right? Or right. Fix so them the money whatever. that you save in the monthly electric bill, does that add up to be the same as it would cost to just replace your equipment later on in the future? So you know, I'd say that's one of our big questions, right? Pay now, pay later. Because so. like cost wise to install, we think is kind of comparable. Which one do you want to talk about first? Well, let's talk, let's finish talking about National Grid. The pad was going to go right in this area. And you could see our trailer, that, that's the little deck. The trailer goes back there. And we'll literally be looking right at it. And it's going to be blocking a beautiful view of the stream. So that just is not a good plan at all. Do we have National Grid come in and go further and cross the stream? Or have them go shorter and go back that way? and risk having to put a second pad in down the road when we build. See that, like right over there in the corner? Yeah. That would be totally hidden. We'd never even really know it was there because you're passing it the way you're coming around the turn. We could put some trees in front of it. We'd never even know it was there. Yeah, that would be ideal. So then the other question is, how far can you go from the pad to the build site before you have the loss of power over the line or if we wanted to bring them further in, I would put that somewhere. Right in that little hollow right there. Yeah, down in there. And then we could plant some plants and things to, to kind of hide it. But the other trade-off is now you're given the easement. Right, then now grid. National Grid gets an easement to it come all the way in here. And I really Which about, is like 400 feet almost. It is. 
I just don't, I'm not happy with that. I honestly wouldn't even be using them at all, except for the fact that they do part of it for free. So we got an estimate from National Grid last week, and just to come in 320 feet out of the 700, the cost was going to be $3,124.80. Now, that includes a rebate of $3,336 rebate because National Grid credits you the first 100 feet of what it would cost for overhead line. So that 320 feet just for National Grid to lay the line alone would be 3336 plus 3124, about $6,500 just for them to lay the line. Right. That does not include the digging the trench, right? the sand backfill, the regular fill that we would have to purchase because it can't have rocks in it. Yeah, it's got to be somewhat clean fill. Right. And then a tape that has to go on top of it. And it doesn't include a second transformer that we would need. So going in 700 feet, if you think about it, just for National Grid to lay the line alone, we're probably looking at $15,000. Not including yeah. the trenching and the backfill and everything else. Okay. We, have, we would have to dig a trench two feet deep for like 700 feet. And we don't just have dirt. <laughs> and there's a lot of rocks. They're moving some of these rocks. They're big. They're, they're like some of them really, you know. No little tiny yeah. uh, tractor is going to do the job. Yeah. We so, have to hire a big you know, tractor. You would hire somebody to come and take care of that. So we're thinking it's like 30 to $50 a foot, depending on who we would get to do the work, who would connect it, how much another transformer costs. Yeah, it's definitely uh, not cheap. Now looking at solar systems, right. we've been doing some estimates on that. We think we could do more DIY with a solar system. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we could do a lot of things ourselves. and. Right off the bat, we wouldn't have to be digging a 700-foot <laughs> trench, okay? Right. We only have to dig, what, 30, 40 feet or something like exactly. that. Exactly. A couple of things that we're thinking about that we definitely need to power with the solar. Well, the ventilation system. The, the fresh house. air humidity control right. system. Wash machine, dishwasher, refrigerator, freezer, all the lighting and electronics like the TV and computers. Mm -hmm. um, things that wouldn't be used all the time, but we would need to account for uh, coffee maker, hair dryer, electric mixer, toaster, the Nutribullet, a blender, the ceiling fans, air conditioners maybe, and the bathroom vents. I think that's it. Everything else will be on propane. Yeah. And then of course in the garage, any power tools, any power or, tools or things that we want to use. Welder. Oh, and our last big problem, which has an effect, and again, if anybody out there has any advice, we'd really appreciate it, our well is 680 feet deep. So we're looking for a pump that uses low energy that will pump from about 400 feet down. Um, we've been trying to do a little bit of research and we're not sure what we're gonna need because we want at least 50 PSI coming into the house. We're thinking that we could probably get away with a seven to 8,000 kilowatt hour solar system for the future if we if it's just the two of us living there looking at those online i've seen them anywhere from twelve thousand dollars for the entire system not including the batteries up to twenty two twenty three thousand dollars so anyway um back to the cost the batteries was the big thing so we are not sure as far as what the batteries are going to cost or what we're going to need for batteries. I definitely want to find like the best value for the money, but I don't want to buy cheap batteries. I don't want to buy these six volt uh, golf cart batteries. I don't that think they're using. terrible though. I think we See, should I, go with the lithium, we don't always agree. <laughs> the lithium ion type batteries. Um, I know they're more expensive. Really expensive. But uh, hopefully will last longer and less maintenance, less headaches. I don't know. I don't know either. That's another question we have. Uh, one of the things I do want to mention, the generator. Yeah, we definitely are going to plan on having a backup generator regardless. So if the batteries do 
uh, get you know discharged in a, too much when there's not enough sun hours to charge it back up then the, the generator would kick on and that's and, the way we want to try and wire it up and that's not an additional charge because even if we end up going with national grid we were told that because our location is so remote and we're kind of the end of the line that we absolutely need a backup generator because we could go weeks without power if it goes out so either way a backup generator is in our budget to have whether we decide to go solar or uh, national grid so we do have some pros and cons um, pros for solar Dad. I'm gonna have to use my glasses for this here so, <laughs> so some of the pros for solar well first big one is we don't have to dig a 700 foot trench two feet deep through rocks and chop down some trees um, the other thing that we have to talk about too is being uh, on the grid with uh, National Grid is they have, because it's such a long run, we'll need two of those uh, transformer type boxes that sit on a, a concrete sort of t uh, slab, right? Four by four, which is pretty big. Right. And they're kind of an eyesore and they'll be uh, along the driveway. There'll be one near the road and another, uh, well, whatever, 300 feet in and then another one, another 300 feet. Right. So. What else? My big beef about the electric is the easement. In order to save that like $3,300 with the electric, we have to sign an easement, which allows them the right to come on the property, dig it, do whatever they want to do. Right. But it's a 20 foot wide easement. And everybody keeps saying to me, oh, but it's underground, it's underground. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about it. Well, then why do I have to sign the easement? I'm not happy about that. So that would be a pro for solar. We wouldn't have to sign that. We wouldn't right. have to sign over any of uh, I don't have to rights. give my rights away. Ten foot I'm on one not. side, ten foot on the other side. If they decide they want to chop down a tree or something, they can. So if we did go electric, I, I'm not comfortable with that. Another pro uh, of solar is we do have a pretty ideal setting for the way the, the, the house build site and everything faces, it faces due south, and it will have the perfect setting for solar panels. And the solar panel you just installed. Yeah, that one works pretty good, actually. It's working I great. I've got a couple more I'm going to set up uh, just to have some battery lights. <gasps> wow, <laughs> they work great. That was our first try. Yeah. And yeah. it's fantastic. It's working Of course, out this perfectly. is a much more complicated <laughs> system. Um, so... The but other pro is helpful. also <laughs> that we would be able to take care of a lot of that stuff uh, DIY. So we'd be able to do some of that work ourselves and would uh, also save us some money in, in labor costs. The other pro, which we didn't mention, is that we wouldn't be married to a monthly bill. Yeah. Okay, so once we do lay out that, that initial uh, cost, we don't have the monthly bill. We own it, okay? That's true. And uh, we're more self-sufficient. When the power does go down up there, which it does go down a lot, um, a lot of trees fall. So we wouldn't have to really deal with that. That would not be an issue for us. We right, we would have definitely power. have power all the time. Well, we would have power all the time both ways because we'd still have a generator, whether we were hooked up to the grid True. or not. There are federal tax rebates. And we'll be doing this before those expire. Um, so I think we're okay. We would get a 21% tax rebate on the system. And that's really that's, that's a significant. That's definitely, definitely a pro. All right. Um, some of the cons about solar. The battery bank. We'd have to build a little shed from what we're seeing on everybody else doing. They have them in a separate location. We'd have to definitely do something to provide a spot just for those. One of the other cons would use you're going to have a solar array which is going to take up some space on the property and we'll have to uh, we have to have an area dedicated for that. <laughs> Another con is eventually things will need to get replaced. Batteries, solar panels, etc. All right, one of the things that our concern was is it was about um, not having enough power to do the things that we want, but the backup generator will pretty much solve that problem. But that's propane, and that's a bill, too. So that's we have to keep that in mind. And I think the only other negative was that we have to really make sure those panels are uh, held down pretty good because we get some really big winds up there. So we just have to make sure that they're really anchored well. A lot of people put them on the roofs of their house and on the garage and that kind of thing. I, I just I don't really like the idea that because, you know, again, in 25 years, you're going to need a new roof. 
But also, if it's on the ground, we can get up there. If they get snow on them, we could clear the snow off. We right. could just make sure they're always clean, easily. I mean, that's going to maximize our right. efficiency. All right, so for the electric, we would always have plenty of power. And if we wanted to put a little cabin up there for my parents to move into or whatever, um, we'd have plenty of power to, to supply them with power as well. And it would be underground, so it would be completely protected from trees falling on it or knocking it down or any kind of damage in that respect. But... Uh, the lines in the street, which are on telephone poles, surrounded by trees in that area. Ooh, look at that. That's a new tree down. If a tree takes down one of those <laughs> lines, we're out of power anyway. Right. Right. We're leaning more and more towards solar just to have that freedom of being completely self-sufficient and not having to worry about a monthly bill and not having to sign over the, the uh, right yes, away yeah. to the property. So we do have a lot of questions. We're, we're thinking about this basically nonstop. And now that National Grid came in with their estimate, we need to make a decision because they want to start the work. The amount of money you could spend is you're basically spending almost the same amount of money. There's rebates both ways. I don't know, let us know what you think, especially if you've had a system for 10 years or more. I'm curious to see how you're doing and any things you wish that you had done differently. We're open to definitely finding out a lot more information before we make a decision. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power.